Hey everyone, in this training video, we're gonna cover what not to do in an excavator. Yes, the top mistakes that we've seen as a new operator begins. Check this out. Hey everyone, in this training video, we're gonna cover what not to do in an excavator. Uh, yeah, some of the top mistakes we've seen. So uh, again, we've done a lot of training videos, how to operate videos. Uh, we get a lot of great comments in there but thought it'd be good to share some of the, the mistakes we've seen. So uh, first and foremost, we've already done a pre-op inspection. We do have a separate video on that, uh, on how to do a pre-op on an excavator. And then we also already know our site. Uh, we've already checked, we, we know the, everything that's here for utilities, obviously all those are important things to do, to do your pre-op, and then also your call before your dig and know your site. Now, I'm not gonna go over, this video is not gonna be a how to operate as far as basic skills. Again, there's a lot of different videos on our channel that already cover that. Uh, so I'll let you watch those if you want to watch uh, how to operate or even some more advanced techniques. We're simply going to try and cover, I kind of boiled it down to about five things uh, that I felt were some of the top mistakes. Again, there's a ton more. I tell people up front, I am not an expert. I will love to hear comments below on uh, other things that operators think are top mistakes made, but I'm going to cover kind of five that I think are important to cover. So with that said, we'll get started. I'm going to track forward here before I go over to number one. So number one while I'm driving here is understanding your counterweight on your machine and positioning to the, the, the tracks. You know, you have an overhang there. So if you've ever seen an excavator and almost all of us have seen the back counterweight all scraped up, that's because the operator most likely didn't understand their counterweight and positioning. So I'm gonna use an example here. I'm gonna drive forward. I placed a big candlestick barrier uh, right out my door here that I'm probably about I don't know, five feet over. So if I track right next to this thing, uh, I think, I, I feel like I have a, plenty of clearance. So this could be trees, this could be a building, this could be you know really any obstacle out there. But you'll notice, I feel like I got the clearance and everything like that. The moment I start turning, my counterweight is going to hit that. So that's why it's really important to understand that counterweight hangs over your machine off the side of the tracks. So this again is really a, you know, whether you're, I've seen it go into to a, a dump pile, you know, there's other things on the site that if you're right next to and you spin, you're gonna spin right into that thing. So it's always important to understand how far your counterweight overhangs. Typically, I, I say at least six feet is a really, uh, probably a good one to estimate. So I say a person length, uh, if you imagine that is a good indicator, anything closer, you know, reality, it's probably about three or four feet, but it's always better to space that further so you don't run that risk. So that's number one, is understanding where your, how your counterweight overhangs and being aware. There are zero turn machines that don't have that counterweight. You'll find all that in and they're more rounded on the back. Those are designed to go in those tight spaces. Those won't overhang but most excavators you're gonna find on job site are not the zero turn, they're gonna have that overhang on them. So that's number one. Now, I'm gonna track forward a little bit further to do some digging. The other one we're gonna talk about a little bit is just positioning your tracks and how, uh, how you wanna line up with your hole. Generally, you wanna dig straight off your tracks uh, with your drive on the rear. You want your idlers up front you want the drive, which is all your weight, and also your most expensive components of your tracks in the rear. One, you do that for weight. It adds to your counterweight. Two, that's also, again, one of your most expensive parts, so it's always best to have that, if you're gonna damage anything, you want that behind you, kind of protect it. The other thing is digging off the side when you're not squared, you're not quite as stable. So an example here I'll give, if I turn sideways like this and extend out, It is extremely easy to pick up my tracks. You'll see that machine, even if I do this, if I push forward like that, you'll see how my tracks are coming off the ground. I can feel that back there. The machine's not nearly as stable when you don't have that really long base of the track system. So that's why it's really important to, as much as possible, try and be squared up with your tracks. Even being at a 45 degree angle, you know, something to the side there will give you a little bit more leverage, but you'll notice that will not happen when I go in front here. Won't, can't pick up that back generally, depending on your material and how far out, but that's where I've got everything that track system. So I can't do that same thing here. My 
back of the tracks are extremely stable. The machine is not going to uh, rock at all. So really, really important to be squared off to your tracks as much as possible, ideally with your drive motors in the rear. However, if I had to pick, I still would want to be lined up. So if I had to dig the other way, I'd still would dig in line with my tracks. Even if my drive motors were in front, I would not dig at a 90 degree angle off the side. So as best you can get position there. Now, next, that's, that's number two. Number three we're gonna talk about. There's a lot, I can go in, we don't have a separate video on trenching, but we've, there's been a lot of comments on our videos and you know we teach very, very entry level operators basic controls. So we don't necessarily teach, I'd say the proper trenching technique, we just teach how to operate the machine safely. So with that said, there's a few things I wanna go over with trenching and what not to do when you're trenching. Uh, first and foremost, as much as you'll see this in a lot of our videos when we start, you generally do not want to start with your stick fully extended, teeth 90 degrees out when you're trenching. You don't want to go in there and just take a bite out of the ground like that and take a big scoop. Generally when you're trenching, you want to go in layers. You want to take 6 to 12 inches off at a time. So you're going to reach out and usually you're actually going to start with that stick in just a little bit. You, I try and avoid the stops you know, all the way out. You want to be in just a hair. And then usually you want your teeth at more of a, almost a 45 degree angle. And then you're gonna be scraping this in. We're gonna take about six to 12 inches off at a time. And this is where we've done some other activities where you're trying to get really good at dragging that bucket so it's flat to the ground. This is where that's really important right there. Now, when I do that, a couple of things. First of all, you wanna take in layers, depending on the material you have, depending on as much as you should have an underground utility marked already, we've all been to job sites where there's not, something was missed, there's an old pipe system. So you wanna take it in layers in case you do encounter something you weren't expecting. You haven't just gone all the way down and through it. You basically, you're gonna expose it a little bit at a time. Uh, the other thing, it's just, you know, it's a, it's a lot better practice on the machine if you are pulling that in, you're not all the way extended taking one big scoop. So you're doing multiple. Now the other thing at trenching I think is really important, and this was something I learned from an operator, you know, usually what I would do is I would come up and I would curl this bucket in, and you see this big old pile of material right there in front of me. I'm gonna go ahead and swing left here. Dump this. The better way to do this, so I'll start out, if you wanna try and keep a clean edge, so again, I'm gonna scrape this in. Once you get to the end here and I curl this up, instead of continuing to curl that bucket where everything's gonna come up, if you just, as I'm curling, I'm backing it off a little bit, so I'm going stick out a little bit, you'll see that material starts falling down. It's not creating a big ridge right in front of me. So that way, I'm keeping a cleaner edge on the front side, especially if, depending how long you're making the trench. You know, you wanna be able to see into the trench, so if you back it off just a little bit and raise it up, then you're not gonna have that big pile of dirt right there. And then you can extend out slowly while you're swinging. The other thing is too, as we've shown this in some of our videos, you wanna, generally don't wanna swing with that bucket fully loaded. You wanna be in a little bit closer. You know, the further you are on that machine, the, per, the further stress it puts on all those joints. So ideally you're dumping maybe two feet away from your trench uh, and you're gonna be in just a little bit there. I'll show you one more here. And again, I'm scraping this in, going at a 45. This is where if you haven't watched our 201 video, there's some exercises there to really get better at how you scrape the bottom of that. Now, that's number three, trenching. Number four is really, and you've already kind of seen me do this, is loading, whether or not, and I should say whether you're putting your spoil pile uh, where you're putting your pile or if you're loading dump trucks, things like that. Now, generally, the excavator oper uh, operator hopefully is in control of where they get to position their machine to start. So, you know, some sites you're going to go into, you're not going to have that flexibility. But in all circumstances, if, if everything's equal and you have the ability to set up the I kind of call it setting the stage, there's some things you want to consider. I've got a full bucket here. Now, I need to dump this. If I am starting from scratch, generally you want to dump left. You want to swing left. Why is that? Well, it's pretty obvious. I can see left. I've got this entire side of the cab open to the left. I can see it. The right side, I'm blocked by the boom. So as much as possible, if you can go left, go left because I can see everything I'm turning into. Whereas if I start going right here, 
it's a lot tougher to see where I'm going. So go left. Same thing with a, if I'm positioning a dump truck, you know, if I'm up on a, let's, you know, on a hill where I'm going to start loading, I would ideally have that dump truck back in. So I'm going to be swinging left. And you know, the other important thing in there, we've done another video on loading a dump truck. You know, obviously you do not want to position yourself to swing over the cab. A dump truck driver is not going to be happy with you. If you are swinging that giant bucket right over their cab, you almost always want to approach that from the rear and you're swinging in a, in a perfect situation. You'll be swinging to the left and approaching from the rear before you dump into that truck either in a straight line or at perpendicular. That's really personal preference there, but ideally again, swinging over the rear. Okay, so that's my fourth tip in what not to do is as much as you can, swing left when you're dumping, if, you, if possible. Okay, I am gonna back up here. And the same thing when you're swinging, when you're driving, as much as possible, if you can swing left, that's your safer bet, because I can see as I'm turning here. I'm gonna take this back. I'm not gonna go over traveling position. There are a lot of different schools of thought on how if you travel with stick uh, in lower to the ground for overhead. That is a, a debate. I think everyone's got their own preference there and I, there's a lot of to agree and disagree on certain different avenues there. But generally either have your bucket lower to the ground when you're swinging swinging left or you're going to be completely tucked in. Now, the final piece I've seen from a new operator is parking. A lot of us don't think about the parking at the end of it. Uh, so what I've seen is people just basically square it off here, set the bucket flat, whether they're extended or whatnot. But what you have to understand on equipment, you know, three points of contact getting in and out. You've heard us say that. I know it sounds something that's for an operator. You just, you don't even think about it. Uh, but your step system, everything to get in and out of that machine is designed for it to be square to the tracks. So if you're not, if I try and go right here and park the machine, I won't be able to actually reach the step out there. I'm gonna do the typical operator thing where I basically step on the tracks and I jump off. If I had to have a preference, I always have a little bit to the right just so I can have a little bit more of a step on the tracks, but I can still reach the, the handlebars on both sides. What you don't want to do it definitely be to the left because then you pretty much lose your step you can't reach it so in this scenario if i put this down as i get out this is where you can't reach the step so i can't get it do that what you want to do Square to your tracks. Now we can access both steps. Okay, everyone, that's my top five mistakes I see for new operators. Welcome to Minnesota. We got a little snow starting here. Hopefully that, that didn't, uh, ooh, getting really bad here. Uh, please put in the comments below what top mistakes do you see for new operators out there? Thanks a lot for watching.